And hello, everyone. It is Saturday night. It's time to talk anime. Good to see you all here. I think all of our audio is working, so stay tuned for the audio mishap later in the show. Um, <laughs> how y'all doing tonight? Oh, uh, still here. <laughs> still here, yes. Been another Saturday. It's been a beautiful day. Yeah. Spring is spring is making efforts. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, the temperature's not so much, but certainly the, the sunlight and, and birds and mm-hmm. other things that do stuff outside. I don't I don't go yeah. outside. I, <laughs> and, and, and the sounds there's of, no anime out there. I can't do anything. Yeah. And and plus there's the sounds of uh, you know white claw seltzers being open. <laughs> this is true. I'm sure that sound will be deafening once we get midsummer and people have gotten oh, the inflato pools out. <laughs> Just go for fill the whiskey. Up, you don't fill them up with ice. Throw a white white claw in there. It's a summertime fun party. It's it, it is definitely a party. Um, <laughs> mm. All right. <laughs> um, so we are here to talk about mind game. Saki Yamasa's yes, we are. First, <laughs> first major work. Um, and there are parts of this movie I cannot show on YouTube. No. Um, and which is why I want to kind of lay out first, kind of disclaimer, this is an R-rated movie, like a heavy R-rated movie. It is not for kids. It is, it is, there's mucho adult stuff in this movie, um, which they kind of, you get very early on. <laughs> you get some yeah. strong yeah. ideas of that. Um, so in terms of y'all's exposure, have any of you seen Mind Game before this? No, this is the the first time that I saw it, and um, yeah. and I you know, didn't know what to think. I, you know, last week I had I had asked you, is this going to be like Belladonna the Sadness, which is kind of the last like really kind of weird, but it had a point to it mm-hmm. kind of anime because Mind Game does actually have a point. To oh it. yeah, and and um, I was happy and relieved to see that it didn't. And um, but the animation style, I was just like, I know this style. I've seen this before. Where well, I've seen this before. And it was uh, Tech on Kincrete. Yes, yep. very much. And um, which I, another movie that I that, that I really liked. Mm-hmm. And so, of course, you know, did the background so it seems to do blah blah blah. But later on, so I was um, very happy to see that animation again or, or that kind of direction again. Mm-hmm. And um, I didn't know what to think about this movie, but I got into it. And then about <clears throat> you know hour 40 whatever minutes later i'm just like going that was awesome <laughs> i love that feel good hit of the summer um <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's, uh, that's the way to put it another reaction um, point I, counterpoint <laughs> the, as we you know talked about you know isaac Ken being so so fantastically mm-hmm. crazy i i i kind of was looking at this like okay what am, what feeling am i going to come off of this i i was elated with isaac and i'm like watch i'm watching this like okay definitely not the same vibe going on here no um i i artistically understand the complete direction that they're going and the reasons why choices were made mm-hmm. um i enjoyed uh elements of it mm-hmm. um art style is not for you I again, I what I would go out to to mm. seek out is mm. different than yeah. what the sure. the the creator had intended for this, right. and so I appreciate and understand the stylistic choices made. Sure, um, just because they're not the style, I'm not you know watching something that's like you know uh, pretty Sammy. Mm-hmm. You right. know what I mean? I'm not watching something like that, and I'm, but you know this, I appreciate the artistic style of it entirely. Yeah. Um, I thought it was really interesting, sort of rotoscopy kind of flip yeah. in and out mm-hmm. of things. The character designs were very visually interesting to look at. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a weird story. <laughs> 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 um, to say the least. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the by the time you get to the odd Jonah and the whale experience, yeah. mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then the artistic dancing and uh, inflatable yeah. body modification stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I just which we can't mm-hmm. show. No. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. no. <laughs> yes, it was definitely. Um, there's a lot of things happening there mm-hmm. <laughs> that I they're, just. They're... Yeah, I went yeah. for that ride and said, "Mind game." 
Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Well, one of the, one of the things I, uh, that I loved about it was that it's um, maybe I was in the mood for it. I don't know, but you know, there there are times when I just want things where I want that ride where things coming out of left field, and yeah. when you bring up the, the whale. <laughs> That's totally out of left field when when the Jonah and, and yeah you know totally because it goes from this <laughs> awesome char uh, car chase scene which I think is one of the best parts of the movie which I mm -hmm. really enjoyed I was laughing out loud so hard it wasn't even funny mm -hmm. and then it just went they, then the the whale pops out of nowhere I'm like going. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. I mean, just okay. like totally out, <laughs> in, a, in an already sort of rando kind of experience. You've got, you've got now the Bizarro with it. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. and, and, and folks, if you watch this movie, there's already been weird left turns Ooh, that yeah. already happened before yeah. this. So this was just uh, just another one that, that, that I really enjoyed. But um, did either of you feel the Plimptoon sense of oh, animation? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 I, I felt all the animations <laughs> another, I think. Dude, there was a point where you could actually taste the animation. <laughs> well, the plimp tune that hit it with me was when you're looking at the mob boss as a baby. Yeah. And his nose is outside of his face. And I'm like, yeah. I've seen that style before. <laughs> yeah. And thank you for saying, you know, plimp tunes. Because yeah. I, I like, I'd forgotten <laughs> what it was. Um. It's one of the interesting things to, to me about Masaki Iwasa is that he is so hyper aware that he's making anime, and that he doesn't have to follow physical rules. Um, you know, things can be wild, but at the same time, he knows that if you go too wild in terms of like character motion and so forth, like it just gets turned into everything can become balloon and just nothing kind of you, you know makes sense anymore. Right. Um, so there's this really interesting to me. Um, not balance, but bouncing back and forth between sort of absurdity and very much grounded stuff. Like that opening shot, which is, you know, straight out of a noir film, um, of just, you know, this guy waiting in a car on a rainy night, and then a woman runs back, it's her! Door slam. Um, yeah. And it just feels like, oh, here we go. And then this giant football player climbs out of the car wearing a diaper, apparently. I don't know. With um, his with his football with his foot like, yeah because he just carries that that's his he just thing. carries it like totally. they're saying soccer in english yes exactly yeah, yeah. <laughs> wait a minute no i said football in english, football in english. <laughs> no i it, it well one of the things i like about this movie is is um having to come back and, and looking at different things i'm gonna have to watch this again because there's like a yeah. ton of stuff that that i know that i missed and one of the things that was really interesting in the opening shot mm -hmm. is the rear view mirror yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't even really realize that there's animation going on within the animation. Mm -hmm. And it's in the it's in the rear view mirror, and so you kind of have to go back and, and kind of watch it and watch him watching it. It should also be pointed out, there are two moments in this opening sequence where there's English text on screen. Yes. There, there are two billboards that say the same thing. Namely, I believe it is, um, you are the decisions you make in life. Yeah. And they're both shown to you at the very beginning of this movie because that is the movie, basically. But yeah, let's talk about that 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 opening and the fact that obviously you get the that sort of noir thing, but then you jump into this um, montage sequence that goes on for what it's like six or seven minutes yeah. um, of just thing <clears throat> after thing after thing, and after a while you realize, oh, I'm seeing the same characters multiple times, and so you, you're trying to follow the thread. And what's so brilliant about it is that you are very much, you're not being told the movie, you're being told the background of what's going on in the movie, kind of what drove these characters in the movie. Right. And so it's just enough there in the back of your head while you're watching the movie to think, oh, I wonder, I, I wonder if that relates back to this. Um, it's a very smart way of doing it where it, it, it pulls you in to kind of intrigue you about what the heck you're seeing. But then it also... It has value, right? It's not just a trick, which I really right. appreciate. Um, it's a, yeah, there's, there's the limp tunes right there uh, with that, that yep. giant, giant nose. Yep. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's really interesting because um, uh, you get all these little hints um, and then you, 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 you start with the romance, oddly enough. Um, <laughs> and just this, you know, this guy, in the, you know, the guy, guy wants girl, girl wants other guy, 
Um, and they're talking past each other the entire time. Which, I mean, it's great for, for Nishi that he's held in this long. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's been since – what I, th- I thought he said it was like middle school. But it's yeah. been like, like – It's nine, since, he said. Nine. Yeah. yeah. I mean, nine. It's been a long time that he's been in love with Mion. And it's just like <laughs> – Bad luck on his part for everything up until, well, the whole film too. Well, and it's the fascinating thing. So um, I mean, I talk about this during OnCon. Um, there's a – Media theory that um, divides human experience into three main types. Um, so we experience um, our own personal kind of experience, our, our own head, right? Our, what's going on inside us. Um, there's interpersonal interactions, other people, and then there's interactions with the physical world, right? The actual universe. Um, and so you can kind of broadly do that. And it's really interesting looking at media and seeing which of those three kind of predominate. Is this a story primarily about affecting the world, about interacting with other characters, or about your inner journey? And this is an inner journey story. Um, it is amazing how much you see Nishi evolve over the course of this movie. Um, because, you know, while there are certainly interpersonal reactions that kind of drive the plot a little bit, it's very much him kind of working out his issues because right here in this beginning, you know, what is his problem is that he's keeping it all in. Um, you know, and he's had this love, but he just won't uh, admit it. And he does admit it in his mind. Yeah. Um, and I, I do love that moment where he just kind of spits it all out and the fireworks in the background, and then it just cuts back. You're like, ah, oh, man. It's just um, an interior thought. And, and I thought that's where it was going. And then, you know, like, like at the end of that montage, he's just like, I'll do my best. I'm like, going, okay, that, that's very Japanese an- anime. Yeah. And then it cuts to him just like staying there, like, like practically, you can almost see the pain. Yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> No, oh, come on, dude. Totally. Um, yeah, no, that's 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 that's. It's just kind of a fascinating thing about the whole whole thing is that um, um, he is kind of a sad sack <laughs> at the beginning of this movie. Um, I hate to say lovable loser, but absolutely no. That's, that's know, very much the 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 idea. Uh, yeah, and here we have, and so for those curious, this is the thing that happens in the, that we were alluding to earlier. Sometimes it'll switch to these, to these little, like, photographs that they have colored in, um, and then, but also, like, added lines to, like, done borders yep. around. Um, but it works in a weird way. I don't know why. Mm-hmm. Well, it's uh, because I think by the time you've gotten past the initial opening scene, <laughs> you're not expecting it to be like really <laughs> one way or the other. You're kind of expecting yeah. there's going to be a little bit of mixed up kind of thing happening in this. Yeah. Yeah. Hayao Miyazaki is. No. <laughs> this is not consistent in a particular vein because it's not supposed to be. Right. You know? yes. So it's like, oh, how jarring! How 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 putting me off my my base here, and how I have to now reorient myself. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, and and again, similarly, you know, and he's sort of pulling us along, where you're you're still in this sort of grounded, sort of romantic comedy kind of world, um, where yes, there's a little bit of melodrama, there's back and forth, and you see you know, the the old man. <laughs> um. And, uh, and him talking about all, all the different stuff he has. And again, and we talked before about how um, anime will often kind of hint at things. You know, he's talking about all the lovers he's had, all, all the girls yeah. and so forth, and realizing this is the kind of anime that will talk about that, right? You know, that's not going to come up in, you know, most anime series. Folks are going to say, oh, yeah, I have girls in every port. Like, no. Um, and so this is... <laughs> Setting a caliber for the for the adultness of the story. Yeah, um, yeah, I love how Nishi's uh, little naivete is is totally destroyed. And he goes when he realizes that the guy has has a wife or had a wife, and he's just like, "You cheated on your wife," and he's just blissfully going, "Yeah, and I was like, I had this person, and then I had this person." And Nishi's just losing his mind. He's just like, "Ah, ah, but your daughter's right there, and you're talking about this." Oh my god, what's I think Nishi even says that like the mother was like the most beautiful woman in the world. How yeah. could you? Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, this is like, yeah. well, different <laughs> different moral tape measure here. You know? Ab- yeah, absolutely. And for what it's worth, like there is a um 
there is a stereotype that Japanese men, when they would go out, would you know dally here and there, especially on business trips and so forth. So it's kind of playing into that that um, that uh, that idea. That's um, why they play golf. <laughs> <laughs> you don't dally. <laughs> Excuse me. That's great. Bless you. Bless you. Um, and then things get even weirder. Um, <laughs> because then soccer guy comes in, and I want to point out... Conehead soccer guy. <laughs> they put a conehead on the actor so that yep. they can photograph him. <laughs> I thought that was wow. I loved it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The continuity director gets an A-plus for that one. Exactly. Yeah. Um... Whereupon the main character, let's just say, dies. Um, yeah. and most interestingly. Most interestingly. Most, most memorably. Yeah. Um, it was and, a real pain, pain in the butt, but certainly blew his mind. Yeah, exactly. Oh, um, and in this horrific sequence, like, <laughs> Yuasa just starts amping it up and amping it up and amping it up. And it's, it gets, like, really, like, oh, my gosh, what movie am I watching? Like, I'm yeah. really uncomfortable here. Because um, it, it starts going down some really dark territory. Um, whereupon Nishi, and I'm going to have to fast forward a lot, um, um, Nishi suddenly finds himself in heaven. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> talking to God, kind of, sort of. What did you think about the representation of God? How would you react to that? Hey, when you don't have a, a Judeo-Christian fixed image of, of a big dude with white beard and flowing hair like, you know, God and man Sistine Chapel painting. Uh, yeah, I mean, that would be pretty much your concept rotating of like, I don't know what God looks like, so anything that's in my head could be what God looks like. Mm -hmm. So God, says, re God responding to that is just like, whoa. So, yeah, and, and it's, uh, you know, he's just basically saying, I, I will fix into one form when you start being honest mm -hmm. and you know he he says that and and he still keeps you know, <laughs> you know, well and isn't that, transforming and isn't that the fascinating thing that you know god yeah. tells him okay now go over there you know and then you're done it's it's time for you to move on and i have to wonder if that isn't a test right like the, the judean christian god of the bible loves testing people yeah uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> so there is a certain amount of yeah you go over there and you do that there, there happens to be a portal over here but you do you do that you do that yeah that, you know um and well also the judeo-christian thing is the disobedience of man mm -hmm. <laughs> just do the thing i tell you to do oh you choose not to yeah. <laughs> like ah i gotcha and you notice as soon as she starts running in that direction god's form becomes consistent yep because now he's being honest with himself yeah um and Which is, you know, kind of funny because it's God. So he could just like <laughs> thrown up a traffic barrier at right, the end of, exactly. of the line and be like, nice try, buddy. But uh, no. no. Can, but can you imagine that if you're running literally with your spirit, you're dead and you're trying to get back to your life and you're just running, you know, hell for leather, just trying to get back. And, you know, God's just because it's like in his pantheon form, just coming on the thing going, hey, you're doing pretty good. Keep on. <laughs> you're on it, Come pal. on, buddy. Come yeah. on, buddy. Hey, you're doing good, buddy. Come on. Um. And by the way, full props to whoever animated that cheetah um, or leopard, whatever. Yeah. Because it is not easy to animate a an animal moving fast like that in a way that looks good to the eye, especially in this weird movie. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And so what happens? Nishi ends up back in his body, um, and now we we're faced with this question as an audience of okay, a did that happen? And B, are we in a time loop? Is this just going to happen over and over and over again? Yeah, um, I was say, he did time skip. That's what I was like, wait a minute, hold what? So he doesn't just, like, come back up off the floor and be like, ha-ha, I'm alive. It's like, right. oh, you actually went back? Oh, interesting. Mm, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm not sure how, how well I would, I mean, even knowing that I was going back in time yeah. to have a pistol in my... <laughs> mm -hmm. Caboose. In, caboose. in your caboose. In your caboose. <laughs> Remind me very much of uh, things to do in Denver when you're dead. Oh, I haven't seen that. There, there's a. <clears throat> is, this a is this a tourist guide? In which case, I no. I'm not it's, sure it's, I'm not it's, it's 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 an old <laughs> it's a it's a '90s mafia movie where one of the characters that's actually how he dies is how she dies. Oh oh yeah. <laughs> Jeez, wow yeah. 
Um, Not pretty. Nishi's way was much much more interesting. And, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and again, wrecked, was, wrecked him. Damn near killed him. Yeah. No, right. um, <laughs> what's so fascinating about it too is that um, he comes back and he absolutely has more self confidence. He absolutely mm-hmm. drives yeah. the situation, but he's in action actor, uh, action movie mode, right? Yeah. Like he's very much let's let's do the most you know over the top thing, um, you know, grab the girls and run. And like the girls are like, why are we running? Like that was yeah. self defense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, obviously, this will work. Um, but he's not thinking that way because he hasn't matured yet. Like he's on his journey, but it's not there yet. Um, well, it's also I mean honestly, it's the after effect of not actually being yeah. dead. <laughs> yeah. So you Adrenaline. know, like well, like they talk about people who have near near death experiences that a lot of times people come back and they're like. Oh my! I have to get now all of my you know act together, and I've got to this. This has really shown me what I have to do. He's just come back from the dead, yeah. and it's like, nope. I've been passive. I've been not doing anything. I mm-hmm. the girl I love. I didn't ever have the guts. Nope. Done. <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. Get in the car and go. Yeah, let's, we're, let's get out of here. We're we're at one hundred, and we're not blinking. Yeah. yeah, you got it. All right. I have to um, answer a question in chat. Because I can't believe this question was asked, which is awesome. Uh, folks were mentioning that uh, this has this is visually similar to Flowers of Evil, which is true. Generally, it, it's a little more um, I wouldn't say anime, but more like cell animated. It's not all rotoscope. It's not all like weird right. faces. Right. Um, but but there is sort of a similarity too. Somebody has to compare it to the Holy Mountain. Wow. Oh uh, my god. <laughs> oh. Oh. Jeez. Um, so, yeah. Um, and I would say, so for those not familiar, The Holy Mountain is a kind of legendary film by um, um, uh, um, uh, Jodorowsky, who was going to do Dune. Um, and it's a very sim- symbol-heavy movie. It's basically <laughs> one long set of symbols being thrown at you. Yes, it is. Um, and it... Um, Mind Game is not quite like that. Um, there is a linear narrative to Mind Game all the way through. Uh, but... There, there are a, I would say, a good handful of kind of symbols that are repeated throughout the movie. Um, and the movie does have clear, like, messages, right? It's not just an action movie or whatever. Um, so I would say Holy Mountain and um, Mind Game are very distant cousins. Very distant cousins. But, but, but you know, so they're, they're kind of, they're mildly related, but not close. Um, but yeah, I just... I, they're both films. That is, yeah. <laughs> ah, that is the first I time see I've the had, connection now. <laughs> that is the first time I've had a Holy Mountain question, and I can't believe I had I was asked the question, and then I've seen that movie, so <laughs> I, I have to take that question. Um, yeah, please, please, please keep telling me in chat. Um, great question. Yeah, great question. Um, so we get, and I agree, Steve, one of the great car chase sequences, because it's well, just yeah. absurd. Um and like you were saying before, I, I love how it is just, um, it rides that line between being grounded enough that you feel like there might be consequences to these actions. They can't just, you know, fly off to the sun. Um, while also being able to just, you know, okay, I'm just going to, you know, put the car like, you know, vertical and go between two trucks and it'll be fine. <laughs> Uh, you can do because, that in the, in the be, yeah, as I say, because as a first time, you know, doing that, you do it right just at that time. Exactly. That's like yeah. perfect. <laughs> um, I saw it on TV once. Hold on, hold my beer. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and I love how the, that when this this chase scene is just going on, and and they're talking on the phone, and yeah. you you know, and doing the threats back and forth, and you know, calling off sides, and all this, and all this stuff is happening, and everything. By the way, is is literally like when you watch it. The great part of this is that you get the sense of speed. You get the sense of things just, you know, going really fast. And then I love that one discordant note where it's the gangsters in the car that you have no idea who they are. You don't, you never really learn. And suddenly there's this little flashback. Pitch. Oh, Pitch is dead. And it's just like this little dead bird. And you're like, what does that mean? And then you see the gangster just pile it in when he <laughs> recognizes that pitch and he sees pitch again as he's chasing Nishi and has a halo and he sees the halo and he goes, oh, yeah. <laughs> <It's all like laughs> Damn. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's worth I, I, about... 
Good. During that whole thing, I totally expected somebody to get shot in the head. I was like, yeah. Oh, on yeah. pins, pins and needles. <laughs> I'm like, we've got the sister, we've got Mion, we've got Nishi, and like somebody's gonna get shot, and it's gonna be like the recognition that like your crazy action has like horrible consequences, horrible consequences. Mm-hmm. which you've already gone through in the diner anyway. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, totally. Um, yeah, I was waiting for all that to, to go down. Um, I also want to point out, one of the, you know, they, they get on the road, the Yakuza get behind them, and then for the next, I think, two minutes, they never turn. Right, yeah. <laughs> They're just going straight, straight down. down the road the entire time. And there's a point where I think, you know, it's deliberate, where you also is like, it's a stupid car chase scene, right? Like, we don't have to have them turning every two seconds. Uh, but it's kind of funny. Like, if it's not streets now, of San Francisco, now, what do we got? <laughs> now... 99.9% of it is a car chase until the one dude. True. And folks, this guy is amazing. He's like Terminator. <laughs> Who knew? Dude is falling out of the car and he's trying to keep up and his legs are going and you think he's just going to face plane on the street at, at 80 miles per hour. <laughs> and he discovers that he can still do it. Mm-hmm. He can still go. And then how he stops is <laughs> made me laugh until I cried. Yeah. Because it's so unexpected what happens. I don't want to ruin it for yeah. anybody. You got to watch it. And how it happens, I was, it was just so out of nowhere. And I was just like, what? <laughs> so perfect. But, and, and it was so well done because when, he, when he's running, I'm like, okay, this is the part where it's going to be, you know, Act me, uh, uh, Wiley. Right. He's gonna be like, huh? And he's gonna figure out what's going on, and <laughs> then he's done. But it's like, no, he just keeps going. He makes Usain <laughs> Bolt look like a tortoise. Yeah. I'm like, what are you doing? How is this possible? Yeah. You physics defying master. Yeah. Um, it's one of the fun things, uh, because it's just, it is, it is so absurd. Um, and that's, you know, the fun of it. And, and again, it's you also communicating to us that, you know, here's what's possible in this world. Um, yeah. You know, you can run this fast, which will become important later. Um, yes, and you then, can come back from the dead. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Um, uh, so yeah, so uh, things continue on. Um, uh, <laughs> um, just laughing at the, the going through the containers full of plush toys. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All the babies. All the babies. All, All, the, babies. All the babies. All the babies. And then they wake up. In the belly of the whale. Um, yeah, it's okay. So, people mentioning the chat, Jonah and the whale, right? Very much the, the theme here. Um, I, I do want to give credit because and and I'd seen the movie before, and so it, the the impact of this was lost on me this time around. I remember when I first watched this, I was like, "Where on earth are they?" Because, you know, he said whale, but this can't actually be a wit what would hmm? yeah. are they dead what's going on and it does take a while to kind of understand where exactly they are what's going on um but it turns out no they're living in the belly of a whale um yes the one rando giant whale in tokyo bay sure mm. yep. that works convenient <laughs> very convenient um i yeah. just love how they're all sitting in the car just like <laughs> uh, we were in this insane car chase. Mm-hmm. Went off a bridge, mm-hmm. and we're not the whale. We're not dead, we're not we dead and that we, we are. My God, we're inside the. Yeah. See, at that point, if it was me, that you know everything happening, you know whatever. If I was just wound up in the belly of the whale like that, I would just be like, "What? Fine, yeah, fine. I give up." I give up, you know, <laughs> sure, yep. bring on the next thing. <laughs> what next? Um, and, and, and the next thing happens. Well, you have to be honest <laughs> with yourself and not disobedient, and then you get out of the whale. <laughs> well, exactly. You know, why was Jonah sent to the whale? Because he, he was disobedient. God, right? Um, and what's so fascinating is that the, um, is it how it kind of plays around with that, where... Um, the belly of the whale in the Jonah story is a um, is a pretty direct punishment. Um, this is instead the 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 crucible that kind of forges Nietzsche. Um, 
And they actually make the point later on that once they've kind of gotten used to everything in there, they're like, we might be happier here. Like, instead of trying to get out the entire time, we've actually found a pretty comfortable existence here. Um, but as Nishi says, like, but that's not like where we should be. Yeah. Like, we need to be outside experiencing the world, exploring the world, and kind of being part of, of that experience. Um, um, yeah, and then you have this ridiculous, you know, environment um, where they're all, uh, uh, you know, on these these um, rafts in the sky. Platforms. Um, yep, yeah, platforms, wooden platforms, with all these discarded toys and artifacts and so forth laying around. Um, and a plethora of fine seafood. Exactly. Um, yes. Because, you know, when that's all you've had to eat, you get pretty good at making it. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then we move into this extended sequence. Um, and it's like it's a long sequence of the film where it's basically them inside the whale, um, kind of getting used to that. Um, they try to get out. They realize that's not going to happen. Um, and they're just kind of there for a long time. Now, it should be pointed out. Um, so, hero's journey... Right, the stories are meant to be. Uh, a lot of these stories are meant to be kind of symbols for other things, um, and often these sorts of stories are about not just that, but also about like the, the, the creative life. They're about um, um, you know, taking charge of your own life, and this is one of the things is that um, um, to me the symbolism of the whale is about how long it takes for things to, for, for new habits to form. How long it takes for new thought patterns to kind of establish in your life, where you make the decision, I'm gonna change, but you don't you know, wake up the next morning and everything's different. You, know, you right. have to kind of stay with that and keep with it and keep kind of working through these issues and evolving and then eventually kind of your behaviors change, your patterns change and so forth. But it's this long process a lot of the time. Um, and I like that it's read out that way. That yeah, like it's, it's kind of a grind of just continuing to kind of practice, continuing swimming, continuing doing all these things. Uh, you know, they're talking to each other, getting getting out. You know, uh, their childhood memories and so forth, and and processing through all that. And there is a thing. There there, there is I think an aspect of that of just these these things take time. Um, and it's kind of remarkable that you know as ridiculous as all this is, and as kind of. Um, as repetitive as it is, in a way, um, in the sense that like, there's no plot of the sequence, there's nothing really changing, right. they still manage to find things to make it interesting. Oh boy, do things happen that are interesting. <clears throat> um, so, you get a couple of things. Um, not only do you get Nishi's temper tantrum, um, which tells us that he's kind of um, uh, still immature. You also get what's behind the curtain, literally, um, namely the um, all the markings on the post and uh, the noose. Yep. And that like gives you pause. <laughs> but with all the hanging dolls, all I could think of was like. Oh no, the old man's actually a crazy old killer. Right. And he's hung like everybody else has ever been in here. Yeah, right. <laughs> These are symbols of their murder. I'm like, oh god, no. <laughs> and then then I, after that, going back and thinking about it, I'm like, oh, I get you. I, I, I understand where that's going. I, I was on the wrong path. <laughs> yeah. But no, I, and I think that was very much the, the intended sort of hint is that, ooh, yeah. how dark is this going to get? Yeah. Um, totally. Um, um, and it's obviously pointed well, out, like, there is Christian symbolism in this movie, too. Like, there are crosses around. Yeah. Um, so there's, there's, they're kind of yeah. hitting at those things as well. As if Jonah and the whale wasn't enough. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> hmm. um, Let's uh, just hit you in the face a little bit. Yeah. Uh, pretty much. Yeah, totally. Um, oh, so we're doing the Tenchi thing with Shinto, right? Yeah, exactly, <laughs> yep. Do I for Shinto. Um, yeah, and then they all just start, start swimming and dancing and playing around. Um, and it gets yeah. weird. But again, yeah. it's symbolism, right? Um, it very much feels like they're just, you know, this is representative of them just hanging out, having fun, partying, playing rock band, whatever. Losing their minds. Losing their minds. <laughs> um, <laughs> apparently, there's something in that fish. Um, because, yeah, it gets, it gets really weird. Um, yes, it does. And so then it gets 
uh, particularly weird in, in two other ways. Um, um, there's the later scene of the the, the of um, of uh, avant garde art being produced, shall we say? Yeah. Um, <laughs> which is weird because it it kind of comes out of nowhere. Well, like that, I think this movie, but it is so over the top, it's so ridiculous, and it's so well animated. Mm-hmm. Yes. Like they put a lot of time and effort into that sequence, which again I cannot show you. But it, at the time I was watching, I was trying to figure out. I'm like, are you guys? It's a windmill. I'm like, oh, you you guys are making a windmill. And then then you know, it's you're still watching the film and you're going, what kind of wind do you get in the side of a whale? <laughs> whale. Oh, right. like where? Why? So it gives it even more like a step away from reality. It's like, why are you doing this well, thing? And then very quickly, like they take it down. Right and dance it around her, and I, I think from a plot perspective, it's and I forget her name, um, um, the, the the short-haired girl, um, Jan. What was it? Jan. Jan. Jan? Rio. Rio? Yeah. Oh, no, I thought it was. It, oh no, that was that was the boyfriend. Sorry, Rio was the boyfriend. Yes, it was boyfriend, right, right. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it's her artistic awakening, right? As we see later on, she like starts getting into fashion and so forth and so on. So she's kind of right. like, okay, I'm going to claim this thing for my own. That I was never able to do, and again, it's one of the great things about you also works is he's often able to, you know, do these things that you without telling it to you. She could never pursue those ambitions because she was always keeping everything together because her younger sister wasn't really doing anything, and her her mother was gone, and her father was her father um, Wan- wandering around with women all over. <laughs> yeah, um, and getting into debt with the mob, which is real yeah. smart. Um. But then there's also the scene between um, our two main characters, when they finally have a, uh, a quiet moment together, shall we? Shall we say? How, how did you all react to that scene? What did you think of that? Well, um, other than it's about bloody time, but <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> well, you know it, exactly. It's I mean, after a while, you're just like you. The point, the movie. By this point in the movie, you're seeing all these different things happening. You're mm-hmm. seeing the the insanity. Well, it's not insanity, but you know, it's just like how everyone's just like reforming themselves, breaking down, reforming, and how they're interacting, the new interactions with each other. Mm-hmm. And so, when the two main characters, you know, come together, and it's and they you know go through that whole sequence, which is um, nice and oddly creepy in certain certain you know like when they're going like scuttling up oh yeah yeah right you know i'm just like yeah uh, um well it's but, the magic of gravity defy yeah right uh, it's just like it's yes, like exactly. i'm like going lights don't work like that during that and <laughs> the killing but well, next time you're inside of a whale doing that, you let us <laughs> okay. know, huh, Mr. All right. Okay, sorry. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> but it was just it was just this moment of just like it just suddenly everything's back real again, and everything is sort of mm-hmm. uh, there's an almost an order to it. Like there's this yeah. like come back to order, the come back mm-hmm. of going of a reset. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it's fascinating to me because I think in a movie like this where they're trying to they're trying to fit the art style to what's going on on the screen. Right. Um, when you get to an act like that, um, it totally makes sense to make it crazy, scribbly, you know, over the right. top, just absolute, you know, um, it, passion, really. Um, well, and, think of think of um, um, Fantasia, mm-hmm. Rhapsody in Blue. Yeah, right. Where it's it's just it's the passion of the musical piece that's going on, mm-hmm. and this it's like it just kind of goes really passionate. Mm-hmm. It's does it have to make much sense? It's just really <laughs> energetic and very right. engaged and very physically interesting <laughs> i'm glad you said it doesn't have to make sense because i think it's one of the, the really key things to it we know what's going on oh, yeah. you know we know where it's going like you know you don't have to be explicit about it so right. doing this to get across kind of how how um rapturous it is i think it's really yeah. effective because yeah. you, you get that, that visual interest right um yeah totally um i think it's it's, it's really cool um and then 
Um, yeah, we, we come to the climax um, where they decide to go for it. Um, and I find it really interesting how that final scene of them on the boat, not the final scene, but that, that scene of them on the boat is so quiet. Mm-hmm. Um, how they're, they're, they're kind of making their, their last statements yeah. to each other, if you will. Um, but also there's a certain amount of girding your loins, um, right. of going, we, you know, we need to be prepared for this because we're going to have to push, put everything we have into it. Um, and so just preparing. That well, that thing. image, too, reminded me of some of, like, the more, you know, classical Greek interpretations of crossing the River Styx. That's a great point. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. You know, yep. where it's like, here you are, you're here on the ferry boat, you're cro- mm-hmm. you're, this is going to be the crossing from the land of the dead to the land of the living. Yep. <laughs> you're not, you know, it's not the other way, and the other way is easy. You know, getting <laughs> out is the hard part. Yep. Exactly. And it's like, oh, here we go. Mm-hmm. Karen? Karen is the is the ferry master on the River Styx. Um, Karen, yeah. Karen, yeah. 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 Um, <laughs> sorry. Um, and so yeah, and so you get this absolutely unbelievable sequence. Yeah. Um, because again, not only is it getting across them, you know, rowing like mad. There's also like the physics of the boat. You also have to believe that they are actually pulling through the water. And so the fact that they get both of those right is just mind blowing to me. Um, yeah, I mean it is a it is a very intensely animated, thought out, <laughs> plotted, all hell going loose there. Mm-hmm. It yeah. just that's it. I mean, if the car chase was amazing, <laughs> this in and of itself was like, holy crap! How well, did you, the, you know just the concept of how all their physicality in this space is just like, mm-hmm. wow. Yeah. Well, the 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 part of this of this movie was the was the part that stressed me out mm-hmm. in this in this in 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 and i mean this in a good way when you watch a movie you want to be excited yeah and, yep. you know, that kind of a thing so that's that's what i mean when i say stress out but you're concerned for the characters and, yeah will they you, make you, it? You, <laughs> yeah well it's not just will they make it you 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 are thinking not going to make it not going right. to make it, yep. make it, make it, not going to, you know, yeah. you, you decide, you make decisions as they're going through it, that who's going to make it, who's not going to make it. And then again, talking about the physics of how they get through. And then, you know, when the boat disintegrates and they're just running and when you like this, it's the only way term I can figure is anime physics where <laughs> like, there's like Nishi is like, going just yeah i mean he's screaming the whole nine yards as he's going but he's stepping on things like fish and yeah. a pebble and <laughs> yeah. you know and and but project that, that echo mo- right <laughs> and that momentum pushes him further and further and they're all just moving just so fast and then you know you hold your breath when one trips or falls or mm-hmm. you know you're just you're just like the are sisters they, are, are like, like sinking and falling yeah, back yeah. Old, the old, old man's man. not making it and, it's like yeah. wow and, and you're just like and you're just like they're all effed they're yeah. all effed and then it's just this is wonderful just like and then on top of all that you sort of get these blips of scenery mm-hmm. of yeah. what they're the kind of what they're thinking or what's supposed i think it's not exactly what they're thinking but like like it's, it's as if the the tapestry of their lives are, are going okay you're almost there so things are starting to connect well yeah. and also every time they stumble it flashes to something that they have unresolved in their lives right right so it's something that, that they are are still dealing with and because they're still sort of held down by that in that kind of very buddhist sense really um that's okay then they kind of they they, they lose it um but what keeps them going, right? That determination, right? right. No, I've got you mm-hmm. and, and the group. Um, and also, I mean, if you're, if you're saying Buddhist as well, is this, they can't sit under a waterfall and let the water wash <laughs> yeah. away the problems. Mm-hmm. They are literally running <laughs> up a waterfall <laughs> that's washing yeah. away the other problems. Um, there was a point like that. You've got a good shot <laughs> of it. I don't think this is what we think of like a blue whale. Oh, agreed. Yeah, I yeah. think this thing is like a giant anglerfish uh, because you look at the yeah. teeth on it. Mm-hmm. You're right. You're and it's right. like this jaggedy kind of like crazy. It's like mm-hmm. that's kind of, and it's maw 
is in such a way yeah. it's like all i can think of is like a an anglerfish right. in which case what's the symbolism of that <laughs> <laughs> fishers of men lord <laughs> in swallowed whole yeah uh, mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. gotcha gotcha that's a great maybe. point um i also actually want to go back to something you were saying before about the um the uh how nishi is running on like fish and so forth yeah. and i love that for, for its symbolism as well of that fact that again when you're trying to grow when you're trying to change when you're trying to move you take anything you can get you know if it's a fish i have to run on i will run on a fish i don't care as long as it gets me to the next step um that almost desperation oh not just desperation of saying okay fine this is what works this is what works moving on any um, stepping stone in a storm exactly. i guess yep, totally. <laughs> um and he keeps on going um and okay there's certainly a um uh, etchy element to this a little bit, but it's also symbolism. You know, they all come out of that, or several of them come out of that, kind of stripped of, you know, what they had before. Yeah. Um, new birth, all that kind of stuff going They've on. They've shed their woes mm-hmm. yeah. or concerns or something. Exactly. Which is, again, why I can't show a lot of this stuff. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, and they come out into into the world. Um, and then we get, interestingly, I get this, another montage sequence. This is not what I expected. Um, I thought they come back into the world and we say, okay, what happens? What do they do? No, no, no. We then kind of see the rest of their lives and all this stuff happening. Um, and all the stuff that they do. And all this, also what happens to them in their, in their past. And all these things all coming together. Um... Um, and you just see their, you know, their, their environments. Um, I love that those plushies inspires me on to go back and start, you know, making plushies. Apparently, <laughs> <laughs> apparently, being assaulted by hundreds of plushies does that to you. Well, um, you know, also her her uh, suspended swimming career. She got that all out of her system <laughs> trying to swim yeah. out of a freaking giant monster animal exactly, thing. Yep. There you go. <laughs> Done. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, um, and then. <laughs> he cut back yeah. to the car, and the guy's sitting there, and he, he's like this, you know, door closes, guy runs out, and he's like, nope, nope, getting out of here now, not having anything to do with this anymore, I am done, and he just backs <laughs> the car away, peels off, like, eh. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, smart man, smart man. That was you made a well. good choice, yeah. <laughs> Just noping right out of there. Um, um, and then you see again, you know, obviously the, uh, you know, things happen are, are happening differently now. And again, to your point, John, um, they're coming back further back. You know, it, it, right. they're not just, yeah, this is all clearly making um, uh, better choices because it's yeah. literally a mind game. Yeah. You know, what's in your head affects. What was it? The, uh, um, the story never ends. Yeah, yes. this story never <laughs> like oh, this this story phone. never ended. Yeah. Never end. <laughs> end. Like oh boy, here it's somewhere. <clears throat> yeah, the story has never ended. Is this the translation I got? Yep. Um, yeah, because it is again, and I, I what I love about Yuasa is that his works have that universal quality, where you know it's not just a story. This is about growth. It's about yeah. being a better person. Um, so yeah, quite the film. <laughs> it was a journey. <laughs> and again, I, I, I credit the film for then running that montage sequence again at the end. So all those hints you got, you got to actually connect at the end. Uh, you got a chance yeah. to actually work through and think, oh, I see where that was going, I see where that was going. Thank yeah. you for tying up those loose ends for me. <laughs> Instead of going, oh, well, you, didn't, you didn't notice that in those three frames? Why did you go, you know. <sighs> <laughs> No, this is what you were supposed to get out of it. Exactly. If yeah. you didn't understand this part, you failed. What? No, <laughs> hey, oh, come yeah. on now. Let's yeah, have the pressure on, on me here. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The never ending story. Oh, no. <laughs> um, boy, it's been forever since I watched that movie. I need Where's a Treyu? Exactly. Oh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, did you see? Okay, we're going way off. Um, uh, the, um, uh, what's his horse's name? 
Um, oh, God. Artax? Artax. Artax, yeah. Um, they, they, they made a toy of Artax in mud. Like just the head of the horse in, in the swamp. It's like, oh, oh the swamp you of jerks. Jesus. Jerks. Anyway, um, that <laughs> has nothing to do with mind game. Um, oh. but that we was a mind game. And so or like, it might. It might. <laughs> Never know. You would think these hands could hold. <laughs> Boy, did wow. we go off the reservation. <laughs> wow. It's such, such an interesting movie. Um, okay, let's go into Labyrinth now. Oh. Um, <laughs> okay. No. no. Ooh. Dark Crystal. I can talk about Dark Crystal all day. Um, yes. Mm. 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 Yes. 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 Mm. <laughs> How come she can? Meanwhile, fly? everyone in chat land's going. Where did they go? What? It's it's that is got fried. Drifting oh, through that... through space and time. Mm -hmm. um, that We're on our own journey. Your mind when you're eight. Um, <laughs> but then when time goes on. Um, yeah, that's mind game. Um, really interesting movie. Um, again, not for everybody. There are lots of, lots of folks who are going to watch that and go, Nah, not for me. Um, but there's definitely meat there. If you're but if you've cool. watched it, at least you've got something to work with and be like, yeah, yeah that was or wasn't for me versus... Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also, I think it's one of those movies where um, if you're not into weird experimental movies, but you want to have some exposure to them, this is a yeah. good one to choose because there is, you know... It's not like, you know, and then a blue rose, right? And it you know, just <laughs> random yeah. stuff the entire time. Um, there is stuff to kind of analyze there. Yeah, the the nice thing about this movie is that there is structure even when the stuff is coming at you from left field. And yeah. there, there is structure, there is a point to what is happening. There's not just, you know, oh, uh, we're just going to throw this conehead soccer guy in here for no reason whatsoever. Yeah. And he has anger issues. He's probably been drinking malt liquor all day and somehow he has a gun in Japan, but don't know how that happened. But we're just going to throw that in there. No, there's an actual point to hey, all that. when you're Yakuza, you have guns all the time. Oh, it's never a problem. Exactly. And by the way, how angry do you have to be to pop a soccer ball? <laughs> Pretty That's some angry. issues. There's some issues. There. issues. Absolutely. Um, well, he's only seemed like a, a nice, upstanding person otherwise. So, oh yeah, you know, completely sure. normal, very stable, mm -hmm. very, very yeah. stable. Yes, makes good good decisions. Very loving of his, of his parents and respectful of neighborhood yes. mm -hmm. uh, and women, especially. Yeah. Yes. yes, 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 exactly. Yeah, very much so. Um, yeah, a universal film that's not for everybody or children. Definitely not children. Yeah. yeah. No, 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 no. All right, we'll be right back in a couple of minutes. Um, we will take a break, and we will see you in just a few minutes for the news and the stuff about what we're doing. Uh, we've been doing recently. So see you or will we? Mind game. Whoa. No. <laughs> <laughs>